It's 12 o'clock, and you're watching KCCI Channel 8 Des Moines, Iowa's news leader, with Molly Cooney, Jason Hoffman, and meteorologist Mike Lozano. This is News Channel 8. What kind of relationship did President Clinton have with former White House intern Monica Lewinsky? As we speak, the president is beginning his testimony before a grand jury. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Jason Hoffman. And I'm Molly Cooney. A White House spokesperson describes the president as, quote, confident, unquote, about his historic testimony before a grand jury. That testimony will be taking place at the White House. We now expect to join CBS and Dan Rather live. Part of our continuing coverage of the White House under fire. From Washington, here is Dan Rather. Good day. Zero hour on a steamy, muggy, and defining day for President Clinton and Special Prosecutor Ken Starr's investigation of the President's personal life. At this hour, President Clinton is scheduled to begin his closed-door sworn testimony live from inside the White House. That's testimony to Special Prosecutor Starr and Starr's grand jury. Now, the testimony will be sent to the grand jury by scrambled signal television hookup. That'll be direct to the courthouse where the star federal grand jury members will watch and listen. The president's aides say that he will tell, and I quote, the whole truth, unquote. White House officials are making contingency plans, underscore the word, please, contingency plans for the president to address the nation tonight after his testimony. Now, Reports circulated on Capitol Hill that possibly be at 10 p.m. Eastern time, but let me underscore that that has not been confirmed. The best we can determine, no final decision has been made yet on whether the president will in fact address the nation, much less the precise hour. As for what's happening right now, let's go to CBS News White House correspondent Scott Pelley. Scott? Dan, a source tells CBS News that the process has begun. The president has entered the map room on the ground floor of the White House. The door has closed. His testimony will be underway in just a few moments. About half an hour ago, independent counsel Kenneth Starr and several of his deputies arrived at the White House. They drove in through a south gate and were immediately escorted to the map room in the White House. That is on the ground floor of the White House. The map room is so called because that's where FDR used to survey the battle maps in World War II. The president will be seated in there before a television camera. Prosecutors and defense attorneys will be with him. The signal will be transmitted about half a mile away to the U.S. District Courthouse, where 23 grand jurors will watch the president on live television and will actually be allowed to ask their own questions by passing those questions through prosecutors on the telephone. A little bit earlier this morning, the president's lawyers arrived at the White House. David Kendall and Nicole Seligman were seen coming in the south entrance. They have been working with the president all weekend long, preparing his testimony. Sources tell CBS News that the president is now prepared to admit to a sexual relationship with Monica Lewinsky, but he is going to claim that he did not commit perjury in the Paula Jones sexual harassment suit. Mr. Clinton will say that the kind of sex that he and Lewinsky had was not covered under a legal definition in the Paula Jones suit. Dan? Scott Pelley at the White House. Let's go now to our CBS News Washington Bureau and our chief Washington correspondent, Bob Schieffer. Bob, give us an overview here, an analysis of what is going on, what the reaction on Capitol Hill is insofar as we know it up to this moment. Well, I think, uh, first of all, Dan, this is the crossroads. Uh, this story is moving beyond where it was. I'm not sure any of us know where we are, but it's moving beyond where it was. This, this, this is a big deal in every sense of the word. From here on, uh, this is going to be a different story, both for this president and for all of us uh, that are covering it. As for Capitol Hill, uh, Capitol Hill wants this thing to be over. What Congress is hoping and praying for is that somehow this can be resolved and it won't be dumped in Congress's lap. Politicians hate the unknown. They don't know what the impact of this, either Democrats or Republicans, what the impact of this will be on the November election. So they're hoping in some way for some kind of conclusion. Another kind of interesting thing, Dan, about three minutes ago, I was talking to somebody at the White House and within the White House, the president apparently is very determined to keep a kind of business as usual, a normal, normal kind of atmosphere there. The last thing he did before he went into this meeting with Ken Starr, he had 
had a foreign policy and a chief of staff meeting with a pretty uh, a sizable part of his staff there. Uh, one of the people who was in the meeting said this was a real briefing. The president was very centered. He was very focused, and he asked a lot of questions. Uh, so the president, at least, is for, at least if for nothing else, for the benefit of the staff, he's trying to keep up a business as usual atmosphere within the White House. Bob Schieffer, let's underscore that CBS News has confirmed again that the testimony has begun. It has started. The grand jury at the courthouse is now hearing questions to the president and the questions answers. Uh, the, the answers from the president. Now, this is likely to go on for some hours. All anyone can do is guess about how long. Most estimates are that it will go on for at least four hours and possibly as many as seven or seven and a half or eight hours. But let me emphasize those are guesses. Let's go now to our CBS News legal consultant, attorney Kristen Jeanette Myers. Uh, Kristen, if, let's italicize the word if, if it turns out, as a lot of people are now reporting, including CBS News, that the president's intention is to, in effect, uh, say, I did have inappropriate behavior with Monica Lewinsky, perhaps go beyond, but says that much. This will, in many people's minds, be a case of his changing his testimony. What I want to get from you is some sense of how this will change his legal position and what happens in the future, if indeed it does. Dan, what President Clinton said when he was under oath in the Paula Jones deposition was that he did not have sexual relations with Monica Lewinsky, and there was a very specific definition that included many different kinds of sex, and President Clinton said no. Well, if he's going to testify that they did have an inappropriate relationship, but that it consisted of sex not mentioned in that very specific legal definition, then for the point of perjury, it could be a way out. But don't forget, there's also the charges of obstruction of justice, witness tampering, and all sorts of things that Ken Starr is alleging there may be proof of and that he is investigating. But as to the perjury, it could be that he can wiggle out of the specific definition if he uh, says that it was uh, just a different kind of sex. Dan? Christian Judd Myers, one thing about it today, before this day is over, whatever the president is going to say or not say, the grand jury will have been said. Let's go back to the White House lawn and CBS News White House correspondent Scott Pellet. Scott, you have an update on something, I understand. Dan